What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 22 in the 8th grade math questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question shows us rectangle J, K, L, M. So any shape is going to be named by its points. And we're supposed to figure out to the nearest tenth of a centimeter what is the distance from J to M. Now the problem gives us this leg, or this side, L, M, and it gives us this diagonal, J, L, which is 13 centimeters. So to do a problem like this, this is... Unfortunately, a dreaded Pythagorean theorem problem, and it's not even the easy type where we can just find the hypotenuse. This time we have to find one of the legs of a right triangle. Now first, how do we know that this is a right triangle? Well, if we see that this sh whole shape is a rectangle, then I will remind myself that each of the angles on a rectangle is a right angle, which means that this one's a right angle, which means that this, uh, this corner, these two sides in this diagonal are going to form a right triangle and I actually don't need the rest of this stuff. Sometimes it's good to go ahead and cross out some of the information in a problem that you don't need, including uh, some drawings. Now, every Pythagorean theorem problem is gonna be set up the same way. The side across from my right angle, my hypotenuse, I'm gonna call it C, and then both of my legs it doesn't matter which one I call A and which one I call B, but I need to set up the actual formula as A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in some of the numbers that I know. A, this side down here, the distance from J to M is actually what we're trying to find. So that one I don't know. But I know that this number squared plus, and b was 8, so 8 squared equals, c is 13, so that's 13 squared. And at this point, the best thing I can do is just go ahead and square both of these numbers. So whatever this is squared, I don't know it yet, but I know that it's going to be added to, and 8 squared, I can use times tables or a calculator to get 64 for that and that equals 13 squared. I can use times tables, my memory, or a calculator to get 169. So I know that something squared plus 64 equals 169. Now I can treat this like a two-step equation where I have to subtract 64 first, take off my shoes, before I can get to my exponent of 2 to get to my squared and take off my socks. So I'm going to go ahead and start with minus 64 minus 64, plus 64, and minus 64 will go away, leaving me just with whatever it is squared, and that equals 169 minus 64 equals 105. And now, if I know that something squared equals 105, I can go ahead and flip that around and say that the square root of 105 equals that same blank. So I got rid of the squared, moved it to the other side, and it became a square root, which I put on the 105. Or you can think of it like I took the square root of a square and those canceled each other like plus and minus did. However you want to think of it, I just need to find the square root of 105, and I will do exactly that. And usually on the kind of calculator that you'll use, you won't see the square root as a button. You'll see it written above a button in uh, different color writing. So I'll have to find my second button or my shift button or whatever, which will be that same color, press the button underneath it, and you can see that I have my square root now. So the square root of 105 is 10.2 something. I look at my answer choices, and the answer that most closely matches that, 10.2 is choice B.